Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and today we're going to try and answer one of time's oldest and most perplexing questions. Can you game on a Mac? Now, this question is actually more relevant than ever. With the release of the new MacBook Pro, new MacBook Air, and the new Mac Mini, they are all now running on Apple Silicon. This is Apple's own custom chip based on ARM architecture, and this is going to be quite a change for the Mac platform. So previously, even if Macs didn't ship with the highest end graphics cards or the highest end specs, you could always game on them. Now, maybe you couldn't game specifically on Mac OS or you were limited to certain games you could play on Mac OS, but you always had the option to boot camp into Windows because they were running on the x86 architecture using Intel CPUs. Now that has all changed. Now you can't even use Boot Camp on these new M1 equipped Macs. So we really do have a question here of, can we game on a Mac? What games are we limited to? And can this new M1 processor, even though it's really great for a lot of other things, can it actually game? More specifically, I want to test how gaming is on the new M1 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro. Because not only does this have the new M1 chip, but it also has active cooling. So this should be a pretty good test to see just how much max performance we can get out of an M1 Mac. Well, enough explanation. I think the best thing I can do is kind of show you. So let's go over and look at some of these games that I picked out. I should also note for all of these games, I will be running them at 1440 by 900 for the resolution. And for most of the games, I will be running them at medium settings unless I say otherwise. So let's start with some lighter titles. Now, I think some of the most popular games out there are lighter titles because they can almost run on any machine. A game that I know personally can run on just about anything. It can and probably even run on some of your toasters out there is League of Legends. Now, even though League of Legends can run on almost any system, this game is going to answer one important question for us, and that is, is there any problems porting that old x86 architecture over to Apple Silicon. Because don't forget, almost any game that you can download right now is not optimized for Apple Silicon. It's still running on x86 architecture, so we need to use Rosetta 2 to translate it. So can this program even run? Well, I was able to download League of Legends from the store and I loaded it up. I went into a practice game and on even very high settings, the highest you can put, I was getting over 100 frames per second. So there we have it, League of Legends. Again, it's not really a demanding game, but at least it is able to run on Apple Silicon and it's running well. All right, let's test out another popular game, Fortnite. So I'm not really good at Fortnite. That's why I'm dreading this. Uh, so I loaded up Fortnite from the Epic Game Store. And again, it started to run just fine. I was able to load into a game on high settings, believe it or not. Uh, Fortnite is pretty poorly optimized for Mac OS. So I was actually pretty surprised by this. Again, it's not a demanding game, but the Mac OS optimization for this game is usually pretty poor. Now you can see as I'm playing the game, the frame rate does drop a little below 60 frames per second, sometimes going into 50 frames per second. But overall, it's pretty stable on high settings. If you want a rock solid 60 frames per second, just drop it to medium settings. Okay, two very popular games, League of Legends and Fortnite run on these new M1 equipped Macs. Another easy game to run, and I kind of want to test this out because Apple specifically showed it off in their presentation, is Among Us. Now this is actually the iPad app version of Among Us running on the Mac OS platform. With these new M1 Macs, you can actually run a selection of iPhone and iPad apps. Now, Among Us ran fine on the Mac, but there are some problems playing the game like this. Number one, the window is fixed to this size only. You can't make it any bigger. Pressing that green button doesn't expand the window all the way, and you can't drag and expand the window that way either. Also, because the Macs don't have touchscreen, you can't play this game like you normally would on the iPad, and you have to kind of click this little virtual joystick in the corner, and honestly, it made playing Among Us really hard. It made the controls very finicky. It made running around the map hard. It made going to certain objectives and being precise even harder. So even though you can play Among Us using this iPad version running on the Mac, uh, it wasn't a great experience. But hey, if your big hang up with the Mac was that you really wanted to play a game of Among Us, I guess now you technically can. 
Next, I wanted to see if we could get Steam running on the M1 equipped Max, and yes, it did. Now, Steam probably has the largest catalog of games available. And again, I'm limited to only testing games that are compatible for Mac because we can't do Windows Boot Camp on these new M1 Macs. But I do have some games in my library that are obviously compatible for the Mac, so I loaded up Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. We can even see that Shadow of Mordor pops up a warning that it's probably going to run worse because we are using Mac OS Big Sur, so that's not really encouraging. I like using this game a lot for my graphics test because it does have a built-in benchmarking tool. So you can see as we run this benchmark on medium settings, we are getting around 30 frames per second, but unfortunately it does dip below 30 frames per second at sometimes. Overall though, when we end the benchmark, we can see we get an average FPS of 34.51, a max FPS of 53.10, and like I said before, sometimes it dips and it can dip as low as 17.94 frames per second. However, when I loaded up the game and had a lot of enemies on screen even, the game seemed to run pretty fine and it seemed to be at that 30 frames per second mark more often than not. That's not super impressive, but for an integrated graphics card, it seems about right. Another game I loaded up was Civilization VI. And again, this one also has a built-in benchmarking tool. Running the benchmark, we actually got better results than when we ran it on Shadow of Mordor. And we can see that the frames per second were averaging around 50 to 60, even sometimes higher than that. So you can see when we load up Civilization VI, we didn't get any warnings about being on Mac OS Big Sur. And I think that's why this game is performing better. Okay, the last game I wanted to test out is StarCraft II. Now, the reason why I specifically wanted to test out StarCraft StarCraft 2 is because number one, I like the game. Did you not see the pylon behind the MacBook Pro? And also because StarCraft 2 uses the Metal API. Now, Apple already said that even if a game isn't optimized for these new M1 chips or an application for that matter, if it's using the Metal API, it could perform better even running through Rosetta 2 emulation. So even though StarCraft 2 is still running through emulation, we should see some pretty good results because it is using metal. Now loading into StarCraft 2, I don't know if I'm necessarily seeing that much better performance or if I'm even seeing better performance, but we are playing the game on medium settings and getting frame rates above 60 frames per second. So the game is running just fine. And of the more, advanced or graphically demanding games. Again, I didn't test anything really that modern because we had to use Mac OS games, uh, but this was probably the smoothest game that I've tested so far. So it looks like Apple's claims that a game or application using Metal, even if it isn't fully optimized for the M1 chips, they actually do run pretty good considering it's running through emulation. All right, so can you game on the new M1 Macs, more specifically this MacBook Pro? Yes, kinda. I mean, as you saw, we played games on the MacBook Pro. Some of them ran better than others. The less graphically demanding a game, the better it ran, like League of Legends, or the more optimized the game was, the better it ran in the case of games like Civilization VI or StarCraft II. Now, the reason why I'm kind of ending this with kinda is because Mac OS is really limited on games. Now, of course you could go into the app store, load up Apple Arcade, and all of those games are probably gonna run fantastic on this MacBook Pro. But I think when most people say, can you play games on a Mac? They wanna know if you can play PC titles, major AAA games, not necessarily the mobile games that we see over on Apple Arcade. And ending this video, we can see one of the drawbacks of Apple switching over to this new Apple Silicon architecture. Even though all of my previous tests on this machine were really positive and glowing, uh, this is where it falls short a little bit. Because even if these games ran okay, and I guess they are running okay all things considered, we can see that not having Windows and not being able to boot camp into Windows really gives us a limited selection of games. However, there is one major benefit I will give these new M1 Macs when it comes to gaming, and that is that was the most silent my Mac has ever been with gaming. Anytime I do these gaming on MacBooks or gaming on the Mac videos, the first thing that happens is the fans whirl up and they get really loud and the MacBooks just put off a ton of heat. If you've ever gamed on a laptop before, you've probably experienced that. With these new M1 equipped Macs, I didn't hear the fan whirl up once in 
all of those hours of game testing. In fact, the MacBook Pro really didn't even heat up all that much. So if I'm gonna give a benefit to gaming on these new Macs, the thermals in them were absolutely amazing. So yeah, these Apple Silicon Macs are turning out to be pretty great for a lot of things but gaming still isn't one of them. So if you were thinking about picking up a Mac to play a bunch of games on, know that the games aren't running at super high settings and you're limited to only playing games that are either available on Mac OS, through Apple Arcade, or really poor optimizations of iPad and iPhone games. But anyway, I hope this video helped you out if you were interested on the gaming capabilities on these new Macs. If you did find this video helpful and you liked it, consider leaving me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, including future coverage of these M1 Macs, make sure you're subscribed. If you wanna help the channel out in any way, like maybe buying one of these Macs, check out one of the affiliate links in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.